All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm sure by now you've heard uh, about this uh, this theme dubbed the Ramaphosa effect, whereby the uh, the rand basically strengthens, investor confidence has increased, and there's a, a general sense of optimism in the country since the new ANC president, Cyril Ramaphosa, was elected last December. However, my next guest says South Africans may not be able to see the benefit of this due to heavy taxation. Joining me now in studio is economist and chief operations officer of the Institute of Race Relations, Gwen Nguenya, to talk to us a little bit more about this. Gwen, good to have you. Thanks for being here. So we talk about this, um, the report that you've, you've brought out. It's entitled, Will the Ramaphosa Effect Save SA from Taxing Itself into Prosperity? Talk to me a little bit more about this report. Well, of course, I mean, we realize that we're in this, you know, situation of a large fiscal deficit around 4.5% and largest revenue shortfall since we've had since about 2009. So the question is really, where is Treasury going to need this much? Where is it going to raise this much needed revenue? And there's really three areas where it can do so. You know, either we grow, so then you increase the tax base or, if, or alternatively, you improve tax administration. So you make sure that collection is more efficient or you take you change tax policies. That means tax policy increase. Increases. Now, for the recent past, we've really relied on those last two measures, making sure that SARS is as efficient as possible in collecting taxes. And, and, and also, we, we've seen a couple of tax increases over the years. So the question now is that off the back of this increased optimism in Ramaphosa, would it be possible that perhaps now we finally rely on economic growth and the increase of the tax base in order to raise the much needed revenue as opposed to relying on those last two measures? Yeah. But I think it's unlikely. I think that in the budget speech, we are still going to hear the introduction of new tax policy changes. And the truth is, even though there has been some you know, relaxation maybe on terms of the efficacy of SARS, I still think it's about as optimal as tax collection can get. So I don't think that a more efficient tax administration system is where we're going to be able to squeeze a great deal more revenue from. Yeah. I mean, in, in the report, it's basically stating that the personal taxpayer is carrying the government's revenues because corporate tax and, and VAT a steadily declined since the, the mid-2000s when the economy was headstrong. Um, you know, is this the situation we're looking at still now? Yes, I mean, personal income tax increasingly has risen to take up a greater share of the contribution towards the national revenue. And I think if you include the fact that it's not just personal income tax that, can, that you know, the average citizen's paying for, but then, you know, sin taxes and the idea now that perhaps, you know, the zero rating on key food items would be removed and that there might be also, you know, taxes introduced to fuel, which currently, um, which currently does not apply. Mm. So I think it's, it's quite important to realize that consumers are going to be, you know, in a much more difficult position and more of a pinch. Yeah. And I think sometimes what we don't realize as well is that it's not just those formalized taxes. There are a great deal of South Africans, especially those who are middle class and above, who feel almost doubly taxed because they pay taxation towards services that government is meant to deliver, and they end up paying out of their own disposable income for those services as well. So, you know, t if you have, for example, private security, you know, in essence, you shouldn't need that because your taxes are contributing towards, you know, the South African police service, etc. So in an ideal world, you'll call SAPS if you have a home burglary yeah. and you don't have a pri you're not paying private security. In an ideal world, you're making use of public health care, exactly. which your taxes go towards instead of having a private medical aid. Mm. So I think that's also important to note that it's not just the formal taxes, but the level of double taxation that, many that we all seem to be paying. I mean, you talk about uh, private health care, private schooling, again, yes, exactly. that should be covered, uh, our security. I mean, these are the things that are covered in our taxes. And then, of course, yeah. we come to the roads as well. And then we've got the e-tolls that we've got to worry about that exactly. people complain about. So I see what you're saying. And there's also this introduction of uh, the sugar tax. I mean, let's not forget about that. And, and mm. an increase in VAT. We, we haven't necessarily touched on that because there's huge talk about this increase in VAT that could be coming our way. Yes. I mean, that would make a big difference uh, for Treasury. You know, just a, an increase from 14% to 15% has been estimated to likely bring in around 15 billion it's rand. huge. You, and ratchet that up to two percentage points, and we're looking at uh, 40, around 48 billion rand. So I think the, the, the amount of revenue potential that lies in increasing VAT is obviously huge, but then the downsides obviously are, are relate to the fact that it's not really a progressive taxation. Everyone will feel it, including the poorest of the poor because it's on it's, it's, on, it's on all items um, so, so that's quite important and then it might actually then dampen economic growth not by much it could be by 0.2 percent 0.5 percent but that kind of drag on economic growth in an environment when we're already growing and 
below 1% actually makes a big difference. Yeah. So let's talk about this Ramaphosa effect then. So every day we wake up and we see the currency doing nicely. We're seeing investors suddenly getting more interest into the country. Uh, we saw Team South Africa selling uh, South Africa yeah. in the best way they possibly could in Davos. Uh, people, investors banging down our doors, which is great. It's wonderful. Yeah. But what does it mean for you and I when at the end of the day you dig deeper into these numbers? Are we really going to benefit from this Ramaphosa effect on our pockets? Well, to be fair, over time we could, but I think it's important to realise that the kind of measures that Ramaphosa could take to, in the short term, appease the markets are not the same kind of changes that are going to result in deep structural change that's actually going to filter through to the majority of South Africans. So re, you know, introducing a new ESCOM board, cleaning up the SOEs, that makes a large difference to investors. But I think the, 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 the time it takes for those kind of changes to filter through to, to South African, to South from push, service delivery who feel the effects of spatial inequalities and feel they're far away, far removed from areas of work and opportunity. I mean, those kinds of fixes are, you know, take a long time and they're not going to be seen by the kind of perhaps more superficial low-hanging fruit that can be uh, kind of picked to, to appease the markets. Mm. Well, interesting, interesting report. Um, I imagine if people want to read it, it's on your website? Yes, it definitely is. International um, uh, Race Relations, Institute yes, of Race it's Relations. All right, it's org.za. All right, .org.za. So that's irr.org.za. Get on there. It's entitled The uh, Ramaphosa Effect. If you want to read that, it'll be there. That's uh, on their website, irr.org.za. Gwen, always a pleasure speaking Thanks to you. So Thanks for coming you. in again. Uh, that's our economist and chief operations officer from the Institute of Race Relations. Gwen and Gwenya, the Ramaphosa effect and how heavy taxation may mitigate this. All right, we take a break. Uh, when we return, 